The Story of Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks by Richard Strauss Most cultures have a character in their mythology who serves the role of the jokester, living on the edges of society and questioning its cultural norms, values, and institutions through satire and comedy. These characters inhabit virtually all of the places and times of human civilization, questioning authority through their own socially questionable behavior, and revealing truth through pointing out the absurdities that are accepted as the foundation of order and power. Till Eulenspiegel might have been a real person from Germany in the 15th century. His exploits have certainly been mythologized and expanded through time and the retelling and elaboration on the folk stories about him. In 1894, German composer Richard Strauss began work on a piece, originally conceived as an opera and later distilled into a symphonic tone poem that figuratively portrayed the exploits of Till by combining the themes of many traditional Till Eulenspiegel stories. If Strauss had a specific narrative in mind, he seemed reluctant to share that with his audiences. Strauss wrote to Franz Wulner, conductor of the premiere, It is impossible for me to furnish a program for Eulenspiegel. Were I to put into words the thoughts that its several incidents suggested to me, they would seldom suffice and might even give rise to offense. Let me leave it, therefore, to my hearers to crack the hard nut that the rogue has prepared for them. By way of helping them to a better understanding, it seems sufficient to point out the two Eulenspiegel motives. Which, in the most manifold disguises, moods, and situations, pervade the whole up to the catastrophe when, after he has been condemned to death, Till is strung up to the gibbet. For the rest, let the merry citizens of Cologne guess at the musical joke that a rogue has offered them. Nevertheless, it appears that Strauss did have a specific narrative in mind as he composed this tone poem. A score with comments in the composer's hand was found in possession of Wilhelm Malka, a personal friend of Strauss. These comments indicated certain narrative elements that correspond to specific themes at particular moments in the score. What follows is one possible interpretation of the story, informed by Strauss's notations on the Malka score. Once upon a time, perhaps a long time ago, perhaps not so far back, there was a rogue named Till Eulenspiegel. Each day he awoke, searching for new ways to cause trouble. His first exploit of the day. Hiding in the midst of the market women, he flirts with the young ones and causes mischief with the workers. Until he is found out and chased away. What to do next? Disguising himself as a priest, he preaches earnestness and morals to those he passes on the street, all the while eyeing the ladies, taking from the donations for the poor, and mocking the other priests by tricking them into all manner of inappropriate and unpious behavior. Is that a pang of guilt for having mocked religion? No time to reflect on this. There are more exploits in which to engage, for the day is still young. Next, he dresses as the nobleman and flirts with the young girls. But they will not give in to him, so he leaves in anger, swearing vengeance on mankind for this rejection.
He then assumes the role of the teacher, sharing his mixed up thoughts about life, death, and fate, perverting what intellectuals think about what is just and good in the world through twisted logic and carefully chosen words. Again, he is discovered and chased away. Till whistles to himself as he walks down the street, looking for his next opportunity to cause mischief. The local authorities find him. He is arrested and brought before a court to answer for the mischief he has caused. Quick sentence. Death. He ascends the gallows unconcerned. The noose is placed around his neck. Till swings until the life departs his body. Till is no more. Or is he? As his body is taken down from the gallows, his laughter echoes from the hillsides. The mischievous spirit of Till lives on. The work was completed in May 1895 and was premiered later that year in Cologne, Germany. The work was remarkable for its departure from the heavy Teutonic sounds and themes that had been the norm for orchestral music from Germany during the late Romantic era. Strauss went specifically for lightness, transparency, levity, and irony, using a standard light instrumental form, the rondo, to usher in a new path in late Romantic German composition. For musicians today, Till Eulenspiegel represents a pinnacle in orchestral and technical virtuosity, asking of all musicians who perform it the extremes of the limits of their technique.